Hello and welcome to another player's guide to role playing. And today it's all about to roll or not to roll. If that is the question. Um yeah. Roll or role play. Um which goes first? And what if it all goes wrong and what if your character is worse or better at stuff than you? Um let's put this uh here for a second, so Actually, like that. There we go. Um, roll first or role play first? Is there a difference? Well, yeah, there's a difference. Um, there's a scene, there's a situation, and uh, the most of the time the inexperienced player will just roll because the GM says, well, roll initiative, roll willpower, roll charm, roll sneak, roll whatever. And as an obedient player, you will roll. As you get more experience, you anticipate these things and you will read the situation uh, better and you will expect to do stuff. Um, anticipate to do stuff. And then you will maybe say, well, I'm going to sneak and then you will play it out a bit and describe the situation and then you will roll and then you have the result. Um, but sometimes... Uh, you know, it can differ where you describe a situation and you roll, and the result of your roll is different than this thing you described. So, what should you do? Should you always roll first, or should you always roll play first? That kind of depends on the situation and the thing you're uh, you're rolling. Um, I guess the. Uh, Things, the situations where this comes into play most, where um, where it matters most, is social situations, social interactions, um, and um, problem-solving situations. Probably uh, not so much action stuff. I mean, you have to jump over a cliff or you have to fight. It, there is some description you can do to add flavor to the scene. Um, but the description does not determine what you're so much determine what you're doing and you're fighting so of course you're rolling and probably you're rolling first and only if you're trying to do something spectacular or out of the regular then you will describe it first and then roll to see what happens probably um, but it is a good thing to always consider what you're doing or what your character is doing and what your character is going to do before you roll. So don't just roll, take a minute to think um, and then decide do I want to act this out first and then roll or do I want to roll first and then act out what the result is because what if it all goes wrong? What if um, yeah, you, you describe a really cool thing for instance we've got uh, Groger and uh, more here and perhaps they want some information of this um, barmaid or serving wench or pretty girl or something and um well let's let's see what goger does he's a he's a fellowship dude uh, he's a social dude so let's say he wants to chat up this girl uh, so uh, the player decides um maybe uh, he he does uh, a witty line or some hey do you come here often wink wink and um you know he makes a sort of scene out of it and then he rolls let's see uh his turn probably charm uh then he rolls and we'll see well <laughs> that's very uh convenient he rolls a hundred so even though he he played out this scene like a very suave and and, and uh, Don Juan kind of guy, uh, as the player described it, um, he rolls really bad. So n now what happens? Well, usually this is where the GM uh, steps in and uses their imagination and says, "Well, you chat up her, but." your breath stinks or you have bo or you <laughs> mid-sentence you fart or something out of the ordinary happens um 
to make you fill your role. Sometimes the GM will ask, well, uh, what is it that makes you fill your role? And you, you have some input. But usually when you role play first, and then you roll and your role go, goes bad, um, most of the time uh, it's the GM that will decide why um, your role uh, has that, ef what the effect is that the uh, role is bad. It could be that the serving wench is, you know, she's uh, not into you, you're not her type, or she's married and she's offended, or something like that. Um, but let's say uh, Groger, the player, decides to. Um, He's, he does not describe the scene, but he says to the gym, I want to chat her up. Then he rolls, and then he rolls 100. Now it is up to the player. Uh, well, if you, of course, the gym can step in uh, even uh, in this situation, but usually it's up to the player to now decide, well, maybe Grogus is. Uh, oh, uh, 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 hi, do you come? Uh, do you come here, work here often? Work, do you come here often? No, he stutters and he's awkward, so he fails. So that gives you a chance to play out the failed role instead of playing, uh, setting a scene, and then rolling, and it goes badly, and then uh, it it's a mismatch. So it it depends on how you want to do it. Uh, my preference in these kind of situations is. Um, well, with, with with social interactions, I think it's it's fun to let the dice roll first and then play out the result. Um, can be a lot of fun. Um, not to take away from the the fun the GM might have, because you know in other normal situations they will maybe play it up, play out the results. Um, and uh, same goes for, uh, well, if Grogger failed, <laughs> he failed miserably. And let's say Maul uh, wants to step in and that they, they want some information. And he's, he's not the charm uh, dude, but he's a, he's a, wasn't he a noble or something? I forgot. Well, he's at least a higher status. Status. And uh, he's going to use his um, Intimidate? I don't know. What will he use? He wants to gain some inf Yes, he, he, he wants to intimidate because uh, he demands the information because he's higher status than her. He receives a bonus. And um, so the player decided a um, wants to intimidate the, the serving wench. Uh, again, they can play it out first. Now look here! You are going to give us the information we want, or otherwise I will go over your head to your uh, boss, person in charge, uh, the landlord, or whatever. And I will give you a bad review! <laughs> like on Yelp. Uh, something like that. And then you roll, and if you roll badly, um, the uh, GM will say, "Well, she's not faced by your react by your intimidation or whatever." But let's see what happens when we roll first. He rolls really good, so all everything goes as we expect it. Uh, let's say we um, just roll again to see if we can roll worse. Uh, still success, so I'll just edit this. There we go, he failed. <laughs> um, and he will say something like... Uh, uh, maybe he has a frog in his throat, or he's, uh, he's, he, he takes a drink and he's coughing. <coughs> <coughs> so, of course, he's not making an impression at all. Um, but again, um, rolling first and then acting out your roll gives you a chance to act out uh, your roll instead of acting out something and then the roll does not represent 
the thing you acted out and then somehow the situation has to be altered and usually that will be on the gem instead of on the player. Um, that's all fine and good for normal uh, situations for average characters. Uh, but what if the um, the character you're playing is actually worse or better at, at stuff than you? Um, now, when it comes to like combat situations or running or any kind of action, of course it doesn't matter if the character is worse or better than you because you are not actually doing the, the running or the fighting or the jumping. Um, but when it comes to say social interactions or solving a, a puzzle or just regular conversation uh, that's something that you do as a player um, briefly mentioned this in the last um, video uh, with metagaming you might have some knowledge uh, that you know but the character does not so you know, you know more, you're more knowledgeable than your character. Um, so, you have a chance to, uh, you have a risk to go into metagaming. But, um, yeah, wh how, how do you handle those kinds of situations? Well, um, let's say the, um, the serving wench goes to serve the other people. And uh, this entertainer comes by and um, carry a wager. Did you fancy a wager of some sorts? And um, he gives you a riddle. And it's uh, what goes on four legs in the morning, two legs in the afternoon, and three legs in the evening. And you think as a player, ah, oh, this old riddle, you know, it, it, this is played to death. Everybody in the world knows this uh, the answer to this riddle um so you know you you say the answer and the gym says oh you know you win or not because your player might not know the answer um there are a couple of ways to go by this uh let's say um Mo is engaging in the uh, in the wager of the riddle and um look at his uh, stats always go by the stats in this in these situations he has lore Reichland um, he has lore local he has entertained so those are all things medium you know between 20 and 40 is still very average so those are all average the riddle itself is uh, a fairly common riddle so there's a big chance you will know the riddle. Um, his intelligence is also average, maybe a little bit on the higher side. So there's a big chance he will know this riddle. So you can just role play this and say, well, you know, Maul knows this riddle, and he says it's a it's a human, you know, he crawls and then he walks and then he walks with with a walking stick. Um, sure. That's a way to go, but uh, what if um, the riddle is uh, is a little bit more difficult, or what if um, more is uh, where well, we go uh, uh, almost brain dead. <laughs> um, this has affected uh, all the skills that are linked to the intelligence so maybe you still know the riddle because of entertain um but probably he's just he's just as thick as a door um so now you have a situation where um uh, I, 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 uh what goes on well it's a horse or a dragon you know he's, he just starts shouting things or you can do the same thing as before and uh, let's say we roll intelligence roll first and then well apparently he's as th really as thick as a door and then act out 
the result. Um, but what if he's... Oh, uh, what if he's... Um, you know, insanely smart. Super intelligent. Uh, of course, again, all his skills related to this thing uh, are really high as well. In Warhammer, in any case. Um, so he, he, he gives uh, a different riddle, a really hard riddle. Um, I'm not really into the riddles, so I don't know any by heart, but uh, something like um, I'm, I'm invisible, I weigh nothing, and you can't pick me up, but if you put me in a barrel, the barrel gets lighter. Um, something like that. And you, uh, as a player, this is a really hard riddle, and you, you absolutely have no idea. No idea whatso whatsoever. Um, so normally you're, you're into role-playing this thing and coming up with an answer. But now you're faced with a character that is actually smarter than you. So well, it's easy because you really have no choice. You'll have to roll first to see if your character gets this. And there's a couple of things you can do. Um, it depends on what you've agreed upon uh, with your uh, uh, games master, dungeon master. Um, but uh, you can do th two things. You can, you know, well, I pass, and then the the the, the GM will say, well, this is the answer, and uh, you, you figure it out, and you you conclude the scene, or you can role play it and say, ah, oh, it's a uh, it's a cantaloupe, and somehow that's the right answer or something, even though it's not uh, a right answer as a whole. Um, but you can say whatever, even though you d don't really know the answer, but just pretend that that is the thing, that is the solution. Um, the same with social skills. Um, you might play a character with an insane amount of charisma, or fellowship or something that is a really sociable charismatic person uh, but you in real life are not so much so you're playing a witty uh, suave uh, swashbuckling rapscallion uh, but you're very much an introvert um, and you know the, the of course the people at the table will uh, know you <coughs> Uh, hopefully, uh, but sometimes they will not. But uh, usually they will uh, know you, and everything is okay, and it's a comfortable situation. Always make sure that it's a comfortable situation at the table, and um, you will just roll your fellowship or your charisma, whatever the social status you're you're doing, and go with the roll and um, play it out as you want. And if you don't feel comfortable playing that out, just no, that's what the GM is for. Um, in general, when it comes to uh, to these things, uh, role first or role play first, kind of depends on the situation. Um, generally speaking, I would say uh, if there's a high chance of failure, where it matters. I mean, sometimes it doesn't matter if you feel or not. It's just uh, circumstantial, or you know. Um, but if if in social interactions, in in riddle solving, problem solving, in in you know, uh, if if there's a high chance of, uh, or if there is an average to high chance of failure, I would say roll first and then act out the result. That's my preference. Um, of course, it's up to you. But if it's uh, you know if it's a high chance that you will uh, um, pass anyway, just uh, you can play it out and then roll. And if your character is um, better than you, well, you have no chance. You you'll have to roll. And if your character is worse than you, just act it out. That's uh, that's hilarious. So I hope uh, this was of some use. Um, let me know in the comments, uh, like and subscribe and all that stuff, and uh, I will see you in the next one. Bye bye!